Well, good evening, Faith Family, and welcome to our Sunday night service here at Faith Family Church of God. We're so glad you're joining in with us this evening. If you've not already done so, please like and comment if you're watching on Facebook, and also make sure to share this post on your Facebook page and on your community pages that you're a part of so we can get the Word of God out to those around us, because social media is a very important avenue of outreach and ministry these days. So make sure to share this on your Facebook feed and on those group pages that you're a part of. And also comment down below to let us know that you're joining in with us this evening. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to click that subscribe button and then click the bell for notifications when we go live and post content. Because there's always something awesome happening at Faith Family Church of God and we never want you to miss out. So make sure to click that subscribe button and click that bell for notifications and also drop a comment on there to let us know that you're watching in with us this evening. Before we go into the Word, Let's have our word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you for this day. Thank you, God, just for your many blessings that you bless us with every day, God. From the moment that we wake up, we open our eyes, we take our first breath of the day, Lord God, our first big breath. And then we just thank you, Lord, for air conditioning, for lights, God, for homes, for vehicles, everything that we take for granted every day, God. We thank you and we give you praise for, Lord. Thank you for everything that you have brought us from where you have brought us to, and the plans that you have for us in the future, plans for a hope and a future to prosper us and not to harm us, God. We thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise for it all, Lord God. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, God, and we lift up every need, God. Everybody has a need, whether it's spoken or unspoken, the needs that we've been praying over on our prayer meetings on Monday nights and also in Sunday services and in our quiet times alone. God, you know those needs and we lift them up to you because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are provider of everything that we have need of, God. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we lift up every need to you, trusting and believing that every need shall be met according to your will and for your glory, Lord God. And also right now in the name of Jesus, we come before you and we ask God that you would just anoint me as your messenger tonight, God. Use me for your glory. Speak through me, Lord God. Hide me behind the cross and just shine through me, God. Let them see you through me, God, speaking on this word tonight. God, open our hearts, open our minds and our ears and our souls to receive this word, that it will not fall on any deaf ear, Lord, that it won't just go in one ear and out the other, God, but that it will take hold within us, that it will challenge us, that it will draw us closer to you, God, and stronger in our relationship with you. God, let your will be done tonight. We ask it all in Jesus' holy, mighty, and precious name, and everybody says, amen and amen. Well, all right, guys. Again, welcome to Sunday night meeting here at Faith Family Church of God. Uh, so we have been talking about First Thessalonians, and last time, Sister Brenda took us through the first part of First Thessalonians chapter 4. Sister Brenda reminded us that we shouldn't just live and exist on earth, but we should abound, meaning to excel and thrive in life and in our relationship with God by living according to the commandments of God that was given to us through the apostles, including Paul. And then she reminded us that the will of God for our lives is sanctification. And what is sanctification? It means for us to be made clean, purified, or holy, to no longer have the desire to do those sinful things we used to do anymore. See, we cannot do that in our own power. So Jesus wants us to come to him just as we are. All he wants for us to do is to come to him with a sincere heart, repenting of our sins and asking him for his help. If we come to him with an open heart sincerely and say, God, I've done wrong, I've messed up, please forgive me. I know I can't do it by myself, Lord, but you can do it through me. You can do it in me. And once we come to God with that kind of heart, open-mindedness and open hearts to God, he can do the work. Because we are forgiven of our sins and made pure, clean, and holy only through the blood of Jesus. It is no other way. We can't do it by ourselves. We can't do it through any other religion or any other religious practice. It's only through Jesus Christ. Sister Brennan reminded us that sanctification is both immediate and a process in that it happens immediately when we sincerely ask Jesus into our hearts to forgive us of our sins, but it's also a process in that it continues to flow in the believer's lives 
When we live accordingly to the word of God and submit to the authority of the Holy Ghost daily, as he guides us in the will, the way, and the word of God and draws us closer to God. She reminds us that it's the blood of Jesus that sanctifies and the Holy Ghost will apply that blood within us daily. But it is up to us every day to choose that way of holiness. And when we feel temptations coming at us, instead of giving in to them, we need to go to God in prayer. We need to sing praise and worship songs. We need to listen to preaching. We need to quote the word of God. Whatever we have to do to glorify God until we have the victory. And lastly, she reminded us that we need to focus on our own relationship with God so that we may walk properly or in the aligned steps of the Holy Ghost toward those who are outside or toward those who are not believers. Well, why is that? Because I thought we're supposed to help others out and lead them to Jesus. But if we don't focus on our own relationship with God first, how can we lead others to Jesus Christ? If people who don't know Jesus, they need him now, more than ever, and they need now more than ever to see what it is to live a Christian life infused with the holiness of Jesus Christ, being washed in his blood. They need to see what living a true Christian life is all about, and that is only accomplished by who is in us. Amen? Amen. So that is the summary of our last Sunday night session with Sister Brenda on the first half of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Tonight we are going to finish chapter 4, and this begins talking about the second coming of Jesus. So with that being said, let us read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. It reads, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So in the previous verses, Paul exhorts the Thessalonian church to abstain from sin Seek to walk in the love of righteousness and the holiness of God. Love one another and do not partake in the sinful pleasures of the world. And then they should focus on doing the work of God instead of being idle in order to bring honor to God's name and in order to help bring others to Jesus. Because if we, again, focus on our relationship with God and try to draw closer to him every day and seek to do those things that are holy and acceptable and righteous unto God and push all the other stuff aside, and that is going to help our witness, and that is going to help people to see Jesus through us. So that was those were the previous verses, just as a preset. When we arrive at verse 13, Paul switches to a different topic of encouragement. He tells them that when their friends and loved ones who know Jesus as Lord and Savior fall asleep, or in other words, pass away from this world, they should not despair as if they will never see their friends or family again. See, though Paul had taught the Thessalonians about Jesus' return while he was there, apparently Timothy had encountered further questions on the subject, as they are human and they are newer believers getting used to new ideals and beliefs. The possibility arose from the death of some of their friends and families. And in order to answer these questions, Paul stated he wanted them to be informed and also to be comforted by the hope of seeing their loved ones again. He led off with that. This was a hope for them that their pagan brothers and sisters did not have. Because those who do not believe in Jesus and who do not profess Jesus as Lord and Savior and who have not truly made that, tra that, that, that blood transaction in their hearts, accepting the blood of Jesus all over them in their hearts and souls, truly accepting him as Lord and Savior, repenting of their sins, those who have not done that, then they are in 
hell because there is only one way to heaven through the blood of Jesus. Every other false religion, every other idealism is the wrong way and only leads one way. So there is only one way, and that is through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So Paul here is saying that those who had died in the faith, that they have the family and the friends that are still alive, they have hope to see them again. In verse 14, Paul then goes on to explain why we have this hope. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, washing our sins away by his blood, then those who pass away in this world, truly believing that Jesus is Lord, and they've asked for the forgiveness of their sins, the moment they take their last breath, God takes their spirit into heaven, where they will live on in heaven for all eternity. So those who have passed on believing in Jesus, truly professing him as Lord and Savior, and they've already received their reward. They are not sorrowful. They're not in pain. They're not hurting. Although we may be sad that they're no longer here, we should be glad and rejoice that they are in heaven. Amen? Instead of being sad, and instead of some people being mad at God that those people are gone, they say, well, God took them from me, and a loving God doesn't do that. Instead of being like that, our loved ones being in heaven should be all the more reason for us to work harder at serving God and living for him every day and drawing closer to him every day. And we should be watchful of falling into temptation and to sin. And when we do fall short, we are quick to fall on our knees, be humble before God, repent of our sins so we don't miss heaven, and we don't miss being with our loved ones for eternity. Looking at verse 15, Paul believed that Jesus could come in his lifetime, and so did the Thessalonian church. Why? Because Jesus told his disciples, and his disciples told the new followers that Jesus would come again to receive his people back unto him. And evidently, the Thessalonians were concerned that believers who had died would miss the glory associated with the awesome event of the second coming of Jesus. Paul answers their question by affirming that actually those who had died would go before those living on earth. As a matter of fact, this to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Those who have passed on there already with Jesus in heaven. See, in verse 16, We get into the events of what we have come to now know as the rapture. Jesus will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. And with that shout and the blast of the trumpet of God, those who have died continuing in the faith will be raised to life out of the grave and called up to be in heaven with Jesus. See, their soul's already there, but their body is going to rise up and they're going to have that new body in Jesus Christ. Instead of, again, having their earthly, ever-aging, sin-sick, imperfect bodies, which have decayed in the ground after passing away, they will have a new, perfect, ageless, never-sick body, a glorified body given to them by God himself, one that does not require glasses or contact lenses, one that is not sick of lung or heart or kidney or stomach or any kind of disease. The dead in Christ will rise out of their graves and ascend into the skies with Jesus. And then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. This means that we will no longer have to endure the pain, the heartaches, the hardships, and the toils of this world. Can I get an amen? We will no longer have sickness, no longer have pain, no longer have mobility issues or vision or hearing problems, no longer have immunodeficiencies. We will no longer have to deal with depression or anxiety or anger or resentment, rejection, or any other feelings that may constantly bombard us here on this earth. And just like the saints who have been raised from the dead at that point, we also will shed our old, earthly, ever-aging, sin-sick, imperfect body. And when we are all called up to ascend into heaven with Jesus, we shall forevermore be in heaven with God, with Jesus and with the Holy Ghost, where we will forever be at peace, full of joy and happiness, and we will never be without God or Jesus. And we will never want for anything again, because we will be with the one who is everything that we need. 
and we will never have again another body ache, a coughing problem, never another sinus issue, or a lung problem, a heart problem, a bone problem, a nerve problem, a muscle problem, absolutely no sickness, and no delay will be present in heaven because all sickness, all sin, and all impurities are gone. They are not allowed in heaven. And that is why we are given a new glorified body by Jesus because sin ruined it all from the beginning and sin is not welcome nor allowed in heaven. And because we have all of this to look forward to, Paul encouraged the Thessalonian church to comfort each other and remind each other of this so they could all work to get to heaven. I don't know about you, but I don't want to even chance living in sin for any amount of time because no man knows the day or the hour that the Son of Man cometh. It could happen at any time. And if we're caught living in sin, when it happens, we will be left behind to live here on this earth. Except after this, after the rapture, the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of God, who draws people to repentance in Jesus Christ. It's only by the Spirit of God that people are drawn to repentance. But when the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, the Intercessor, he will no longer be here. He will withdraw from the earth and go back to heaven. And because the Spirit of God will withdraw from the earth, evil will abound so much more. And you think it's hard to live for God right now with all the persecution, the lies, the bickering, the anger, the hatred, the looting, the killing, everything going on today. You think it's hard now? Without the Spirit of God being on the earth, you haven't seen anything about what the earth will be like. Evil will multiply exponentially. And the only way to make it to heaven at that point will be to confess Jesus as Lord and Savior by truly believing it and either die a natural death or die as a martyr for Jesus. And it will not be easy either way, because when you, when people in that time find out that you are a Christian, they will make your life miserable even now more than ever that they do on this earth. And you could even die for it. That's why it's called being a martyr for Jesus. Being a martyr means you are killed for your belief in Jesus. You use, you are used to make an example to the world as to what will happen for those who profess Jesus. That is why, church, it is so important for us to teach our kids the importance of paying attention in church, in services, and the importance of worshiping God and studying His Word every single day. We need to drive it home with our kids. That's why it's so important that we quit playing games and we quit treating salvation as a last ditch effort because we want to have a little more fun in life before we have to dole ourselves down as some people try to say or so to speak because we think we have all the time in the world, but we truly don't. This is why it's so important for us to live for God with everything in us right now. That is why it's so important that we put time and dedication into our relationship with God so we can draw closer to him every single day and seek to avoid sin and temptation every day. Because again, you think that it's hard now. Oh boy, you don't want to be around for when the spirit of God withdraws from this earth. It will be exponentially worse than you could ever imagine or think. So don't wait around to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. It's not a game. Time waits for no one. And as a good friend of ours, of Pastor Sister Brennan and myself, as he sings, time is, time is, time is winding up. Time is, time is, time is winding up. We've got destruction in our land. God's going to raise his hand. Time is winding up. It's coming close. We've heard it for years, but it is closer now than ever. And no man again knows the day or the hour the Son of Man cometh. Only God knows. And he's going to tell Jesus one day, he says, Okay, my son, it's time. Go get our children. And that day will come sooner than you ever think. And after that point, it's going to be so much harder. There will be a day that it will be too late to make a change. And wherever your soul falls in the balance, there it will lay, either heaven 
or hell. And hell is not a place to party. It's a place of torment, sickness, excruciating pain, darkness, loneliness, rejection, anger, and every other negative emotion you could ever think of. Multiply it exponentially, and there is no escape from it. It is eternal, never-ending. So, church, let's make ourselves ready every single day. Let's take an account, inventory, of our souls every day. You know, we're not perfect. We are made of flesh. The spirit is encased in a fleshly body. And there is temptation thrown at us day after day. We have human emotions, but it's up to us to push away the temptation, to resist the temptations, focus on our relationship with God and the word of God, and to keep our emotions in check and make sure they line up with God and Jesus' example of emotion and how he reacted in those emotions, it is up to us to decide every day. I'm going to do my very best for God. I'm not going to let anything else influence me. And when I fall short, I'm going to say, Jesus, I admit I've done wrong. I have sinned. I am sorry. Please forgive me. Draw me closer to you. Help me not to do that thing ever again, God. Take that away from me. Draw me closer to you. Make me more like you. In Jesus' name, it is up to us to make ourselves ready every day and let us stay ready for when the moment comes when Jesus splits open the clouds in the sky and he calls his children home. Will you be one of those that he calls home? I plan to be, and I sure hope you will be too. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this word, Lord God, that even though we know this word, we've heard it many times preached throughout our lives, Lord. Thank you for the reminder that time is winding up, God, and that we need to be ready for in such an hour as we think not, the Son of Man cometh. You will come, Jesus, Lord, to call us home. And when that moment comes, those who have accepted you as Lord and Savior of their lives and professed you as Savior and asked forgiveness of their sins, they will be called up to be with you in the air, in heaven forevermore. And those who have not will be left behind on this earth, and it will be so much harder. Lord God, thank you for reminding us of that, Lord. And it's not to necessarily just to scare us, Lord God, but to remind us that there is still time, but time is winding up. It's coming to a close. And you will, you would, God, that everybody would come to repentance because you don't want them to have to live through that time on this earth of tribulation and hardship. You want us to be in heaven with you, God, in abundance and overflow and happiness and joy where there's no sickness, no sorrow, no sadness, no negativity, where there is only life and life more abundant. Abundantly. Thank you for reminding us of your love for us. Thank you for reminding us to be ready at all times, God. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that if there be anything within us keeping us from you, that you would show us those things, that you would remove them from us like a surgeon surgically and precisely removes impurities in surgery, that you would surgically remove those impurities from us, those bad habits, those those temptations, everything that is just wrong within us, God, and around us, that you would surgically remove those things with precision and that you would draw us closer to you, fill those things, those voids, God, with things that glorify you, with your presence, with your spirit, with your word, God, things that glorify you and draw us closer to you, God. Help us, God, to be ready at all times to take inventory of ourselves every day, God, and to remain humble and repentant before you, Lord God, before it is too late, God, because, again, it is not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, God, thank you for that reminder and help us to draw closer to you every day and stronger in our faith and our belief in you, God. Help us to speak up as your children these days so that we can spread this word out to those around us, God, and not 
do so in fear, Lord God, not, fe you know, just not fearing that the word would not be received, Lord God, or what am I going to say, Lord? But no, let's push that fear aside, embolden us, strengthen us, give us the courage, the confidence, the words to say, Lord God, that when we open our mouths, it'll just come flying out. And God, you will use us and speak through us into this lost and dying sinful world so that people can come to the knowledge and the saving grace of you, Lord Jesus Christ, before it is too late. God, we thank you. We give you glory and honor and praise for it all. And we ask it all in the mighty and holy and precious, matchless name of Jesus Christ. And everybody says, amen and amen. Guys, don't forget that tomorrow night is Monday night at 6 o'clock. We'll be coming online for the online prayer meeting. So get those prayer requests into us by Faith Family Church of God or the FFCOG Family Group if you're a part or a member of our church or the Special Unspoken and Spoken Request Group or the Lord is My Shepherd Encouragers Group of Sister Marshes on Facebook. Don't forget to send those prayer requests into us. Or if you have a praise report, make sure to send those into us as well because we want to rejoice in the Lord over what he's doing in your life. So send those requests and those praise reports to us. Or you can either message Pastor, Sister Brenda, or myself and let us know as well. And we'll be glad to include those on our Monday night prayer session tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, Facebook and YouTube. And then Tuesday night, I believe it is Sister Marsha that is bringing the word for our youth lesson at 6.30. So make sure to tune in Tuesday night at 6.30. I encourage all of our youth and their parents, I encourage us all no matter what age, to tune in because God always has a word anytime that we tune in for the reading and studying of his word together. Tuesday night, 6.30 for our youth lesson, and then Wednesday night, 6.30 for Bible study with pastor. So don't forget to tune in on those nights because it is church just like any other night. And again, Sunday morning, 10.45 a.m. morning worship at Faith Family Church of God, 3808 Old Brandon Road in Pearl, Mississippi, 39208. We'd love to have you with us. And if you're unable to join due to distance or any other reason, we are on Facebook on Sunday mornings. So make sure to tune in with us on at 1045 a.m. for Sunday morning worship at Faith Family Church of God. And then again for Sunday night services at five o'clock on Facebook and on YouTube. So love you all. Have an awesome week. God bless. And let us remain humble before the Lord and let us stay ready at all times. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. See you all tomorrow night for prayer. God bless.